guys, it's Sasha, and as I've stated before in some of my other videos, July 10th is uh, Bahamian Independence Day, and so I wanted this month to be talking about um, different, well, all things Bahamian, preferably. Um, so that's what I was going to make a lot of my videos about. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about Bahamian history and how that has affected our culture. I did a um, paper on this. If you hear any noise in the background, that is my siblings and it just be like that. Anyway, I did a paper on this um, last year uh, for, a cla for my historiography class. Um, I'm by no means a professional historian. I would like to be one day um, and I do make mistakes. Uh, if you have any corrections, you know, talk about in the comments um by no means are um, professional historians um perfect because uh they make mistakes as well and have their own biases but i'm going to be talking about uh the movement of peoples through the bahama islands and how that has helped shape uh present day modern day culture in the bahamas um in this paper i kind of break it up into four sections it could have been longer but i had to kind of shorten it down so that's why it's just four major sections obviously you could even split it up even more than but um i hope you enjoyed this video uh tell me what you think um tell me if you learned anything um yeah i will list all my sources in the i want to say text box but you know down below i'll list it all in there if you want to check it out um it's i honestly couldn't find as much primary sources as i would have liked um to access so that was a problem for me but i did was able to glean still a lot of information from other bahamian professional historians and so i used a lot of that um so yes that's all for now so this is a brief introduction the movement of peoples throughout the bahama islands from the period of discovery to the late 1800s the Bahamas is home to a wide variety of people. The Bahamas has had a spot in history as the first place discovered by Christopher Columbus in the New World. It is the water gateway to Florida and therefore the whole USA. It was a stopping point for many slave ships. A lot of slaves came through the Caribbean on the way to the Americas. The illegal immigrants that land on Florida beaches usually pass through the Bahamas. The Bahamas has been an important stopping point in port for people since the founding of the New World. The movement of various people groups throughout the Bahama Islands has influenced and formed the culture of the Bahamas today. The original natives of the Bahama Islands were the Lucayan people who lived in the Lucayan archipelago, which includes the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Only from the accounts of explorers who sailed the islands of the Lucayan archipelago and through archaeological remains can we know about the Lucayan people. The Lucayan people were a subset of the Arawak Indians from Hispaniola, whose beliefs included a hierarchy of gods, hero leaders, and ordinary mortals. The Lucayan people's beliefs were explained to the Spanish explorers when they met the indigenous, and that is how we know about it today. The shallow waters of the Bahama Islands made living in the Bahamas relatively easy for the indigenous. Main settlements were in the central islands of the Bahamas, but there were smaller settlements throughout the various outer islands. The largest settlement was on the island of Guahanin, and that is where Christopher Columbus would first land in the New World. Christopher Columbus landed on the island of Guahanin, which he would rename San Salvador. It was on August 3rd, 1492, a day that would forever change the world. The new world had been discovered, and the old world would never be the same. Seeing the pale skin of the Spaniards, the Lucayans thought the Spaniards were gods. It is quoted, many came each with something, giving thanks to God, throwing themselves to the ground, and raising their hands to the sky. Columbus and the other Spaniards viewed the Lucayans as servants and then quickly turned their thoughts to slaves. The Columbus expedition took seven unwilling Lucayans, two of whom escaped back with them to Spain. The main reasons for the New World expedition was to find a new route to China and India as well as searching for gold. The search for gold was futile in the Bahamas as there were none. Col Christopher Columbus sailed to Cuba, Haiti, and then back to Spain. The Lucayans would continue to deal with more European explorers as they came to the islands of the Bahamas. The Spanish and Portuguese regularly took the indigenous as slaves, causing the population to dwindle. According to Bishop Bartholomew Las Casas, that infernal fire, that devastating plague, raged on until the slavers could find no Lucayans to enslave.
This happened within 25 years of discovery. Diseases introduced to the indigenous spread like wildfire. Bishop Las Casas suggested that the Spanish find the islanders still left and take them to live with the natives in Hispaniola. A ship was commissioned and sent out, but only 11 indigenous were found living in the Bahamas. After the last Lucayans passed away, the Bahamas would not be inhabited for the next 130 years. The Lucayans would not leave a cultural mark on the Bahamian people of today so much as a physical mark on the islands of the Bahamas. In order to understand the Bahamas from the 1600s onward, one needs to understand why there was no inhabitants in the land already and what had happened to them. The English crown established their hold on the Bahamas in the 14th century. English explorers came and went throughout the Caribbean islands during the Elizabethan age of the 1500s. Land grants were given to faithful servants of the queen. Bequeathed to some of the queen's servants were the Bahama Islands. An early colony was created there, but it did not grow and soon died out. This first colony would be the first in a long line of English attempts to colonize the Bahamas. However, Bermuda, one of the Bahamas' neighbors, was well populated and had flourishing colonies. Bermuda was a springboard for the English settlers in the New World. The Bahamas was not yet fully settled. It was well known that there was a group of islands right off of the coast of Florida that belonged to Great Britain. In 1614, there was a sizable religious upheaval in Bermuda. A few of the clergymen in Bermuda were separating themselves from the Church of England. The clergymen decided to leave Bermuda and to go to the Bahamas where they could live a chaste Christian life. Captain William Sale and Reverend William Golding were the leaders of this separatist group, and in 1646 they went to England to gain land in the Bahamas to settle on. Permission was granted, and the Company of the Adventures for the Plantation of the Islands of Lutheria came into existence. Setting sail early in 1648, the company's ship wrecked near Governor's Bay, Eleuthera. Only one casualty happened, but many of the supplies were ruined, making the first two years in Eleuthera hard as they faced starvation. In 1650, many settlers left for Bermuda, and by 1657, Captain Sale had left the colony. At this point, only the Resolute stayed. In 1656, some troublesome slaves and native Bermudans and all free Negroes were sent to Eleuthera. Historians have speculated that other North American colonies used Eleuthera for dumping their unwanted people as well. The Spanish raided Eleuthera in 1684 and destroyed their two most significant settlements. Eleuthera did not recover from the Spanish attack, and only the most resolute and rough people stayed in Eleuthera. Resilience is a character of those who survived and stayed, just as it is a characteristic of the Bahamian people today. The island of New Providence came to life with the proprietors. A proprietor was someone who was granted a royal charter for establishment and government of English colonies. A colony officially came in 1670 and there was a healthy population of 300 colonists on New Providence. The proprietors did not suffer the same hardship as the Lutherian settlers, based on New Providence's geographical location. The central location of the island protected it from the harsh weather. England tried to set up laws for the colony in New Providence and the other Bahama Islands, but the settlers were a restless people who did not take kindly to laws. The settlers wrecked Spanish ships, which caused the Spanish to attack New Providence. The colony was severely damaged and many settlers left New Providence. A second New Providence colony came again two years later in 1686 with immigrants from Jamaica. The colony flourished once again and experienced great economic wealth by exporting salt. Piracy played a significant role in the population rise in the Bahama Islands during the 1700s. British imperial reforms of the 1696 and 1697 clamped down on the Bahamian settlers and the questionable traders based in New Providence. The Treaty of Utrecht in 1713 said freebooters could no longer bear pretense of being licensed privateers. The golden age of piracy had come, and New Providence, specifically its capital city, Nassau, were at the forefront of this age. Piracy and the calm life of farming and fishing meshed together in New Providence because... A reoccurrence of conditions of extreme poverty, lack of profitable alternatives, and the 
absence of strong forces of the law and order found during the classical era of Bahamian piracy were firmly seen. Though impoverished, the Bahamas was still a British colony and England wanted piracy expelled. Piracy was a way of life in the Bahamas. Many of the governors of the Bahamas were either engaging in piracy themselves or were friends with pirates. Insufficiency of the proprietary system resulted in the piracy era. Piracy itself was not self-sustaining, though. It did not pay well to be a pirate. Pirates lived fast and died hard, but they created a vast marine enterprise and industry in the Bahamas. The lures of riches and adventure made it a hard industry to shut down, however. Transforming the Bahamas was no easy task. Lawlessness, persistency, and resilience would all mesh together to become a part of the Bahamian psyche. Or expel pirates and restore com commerce is the cry that arose from Captain Woods Rogers, the first royal governor in the Bahamas. Captain Rogers arrived in Nassau on July 26, 1718. Clamping down on piracy, setting up an effective government, and establishing Great Britain as the clear ruler over the Bahama Islands was Roger's job. It was a hard lot. Bahamians were not used to living under an orderly government. All of these difficulties led to Captain Rogers leaving Nassau in 1721, frustrated and in debt. From 1721 to 1729, Governor George Fenney helped boost economic security and imperial expansion. It was under Governor Fenney that the first substantial import of slaves came into the Bahamas. The general population rose from 1,000 to 1,400 with a 60% increase in the number of blacks. Captain Rogers came back to assume the position of governor from 1729 to 1732. During this term, Rogers created representative legislation for the populated islands of the Bahamas. The roots of the pirate spirit were still in the Bahamian society, but the legendary pirate era was finished by the end of Captain Rogers' second term. Records before the 1640s on the arrival and lives of Africans in the Bahamas are hard to find. Many free blacks and slaves came to the Bahamas during the age of the Eleutherian adventurers and proprietors. British loyalists from the United States of America came to the Bahamas because of the American Revolutionary War, bringing their slaves with them. In the early 1800s, the Bahamas suffered a series of economic challenges that caused many plantation owners to sell or abandon their slaves in the Bahamas. The Slave Trade Act of 1807 prohibited the slave trade in the British Empire and the emancipation of slaves through the British Empire in 1834 changed the dynamics of racial interaction in the Bahamas. Bahamas. Between 1807 and 1834, the British Navy brought thousands of African slaves liberated from passing slave ships to the Bahamas. Black settlements sprung up all over New Providence, the most prominent being Adelaide on the southwestern side of New Providence. American runaway slaves came to the Bahamas on the Saltwater Underground Railroad. The black population outweighed the white population in the Bahamas by a large margin throughout all the Bahama Islands by the late 1700s and beyond to the present day Bahamas. Fear caused many loyalists to leave America for British colonies and in some cases Great Britain itself. After the American Revolutionary War, many loyalist families that had stayed in America now awaited evacuation to British territories. The loyalists had helped the Bahamas fight off the Spanish from New Providence in 1783 and they received land grants in 1786. Bahamian loyalists later received individual grants of land from Lord Dunmore and most were included in the 6,000 acre grant on Eleuthera later granted by the government. The island of Abaco became a haven for many American loyalists who had set up their homes and plantations there. Abaco had very fertile soil and the loyalists thrived. Present day Abaco and Eleuthera have a large population of white Bahamians, many of whom can trace their heritage back to American loyalists. Post-emancipation Bahamas saw many Bahamians immigrating to Key West, Florida, and British Guyana. The Bahamian economy post-emancipation was not thriving and there was limited job opportunities. Many Bahamians did fishing and subsistence farming during the 1830s. 
Though economic uncertainty caused many Bahamians to either migrate or try to eke out a living from the land, a lot of the West Indies laborers migrated to the Bahamas because of similar economic problems in their countries. The Bahamas was divided on racial and ethnic grounds, but even more divided on economic grounds. The black population was saved from complete subjugation because of the marginalization of the Bahamas and the world economy, the amount of land that was available for cultivation and the hard work of the people. Besides subsistence farming, sharecropping was popular in the mid-1800s. Adder Island sharecroppers did not have an easy way of life with the severe form of sharecropping that took place. In the Adder Islands, it was easy for black Bahamians to be treated worse than in New Providence. Migration between the Bahama Islands was common during the 1840s to 1860s. The abolishment of slavery, the transformation of maritime transport, and the development of the black community had a significant social impact on the Bahamas in the 1800s. All of these helped transform the Bahamas and New Providence's economy, boosting it up again, especially in the 1860s during the American Civil War. The blockades that the Union put on the Confederacy helped promote ships to take harbor in the Bahamas. The end of the 18th century saw the Bahamas with a severe socioeconomic divide. In New Providence, many black Bahamians lived in shanty towns on the outskirts of the island or just removed from the white local areas. In the Outer Islands, there was more of a harmonious blend of races, but there was still a divide. From farming and fishing were what kept the ec- economy up in the Outer Islands and the Bahamas. New Providence was the hub, seeing the majority of trading, tourism, and people migrating during the late 1800s and beyond. It was during the 19th century that Bahamian culture began to show itself. This is quoted, what gave the Bahamian blacks their innate love of their fellows and fellow spirits, their propensity to share in their adversity, and their remarkable resilience was the continuing ever-growing strength of their Afro-Bahamian cultural life, end quote. African, West Indian, and British influence blended to create the Bahamian society that one can see today. These influence have worked their way into every area of society, from the structure of the government and politics to the holidays that Bahamians celebrate today. British influences are at the forefront. African influences can be seen in traditional bush medicine, African spiritualism, music, and dance. Bahamian Creole is a mixture of African, West Indian, and British influences. The Bahamas has a fascinating history that comes from a blend of people who lived, loved, and died on the Bahama Islands. The influx of various people groups from the 1490s to the late 1800s have all left their mark on the Bahamas, both physically and culturally. The historical past of the Bahamas has shaped what the present-day Bahamas is like. Um, that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me what you thought of it. Um, don't forget, you're special and God loves you very much.